Hey everyone, in this video I want to show you a really cool app called Nomad Sculpt. And if you come from a background where from ZBrush or Blender or 3D Coat, this is really going to make sense to you. Um, if you don't, and this is the first time that you started to sculpt, then don't worry, the UI is really simple in this app and it's great to just get you up and running to start sculpting. Uh, so as an alternative method to sculpting, Nomad Sculpt is great. Now I'm unsure whether it's on um, Android, but it's certainly on iOS, iPad. So go check this out and go download it. I believe you do have to pay for it, uh, but it's um, a great price again to get you up and running. Uh, it's very cheap in that respect. So let's get up and running. So we've started the software and we started with this sphere. We can see here on the left, we have our brushes and on the right we have our radius now i have switched this to uh, left-handed i am left-handed um so it will it might be on the other side but don't worry um it's all the same it's just flipped to the other side i am that strange one that one person who's left-handed <laughs> uh yeah so we can see on the right hand side or the left we've got these radius sliders here this will increase the intensity but we're going to get into that soon when we can actually see the effect from these tools so here we've got the clay selected and I've currently got this subsection selected down here which means that's going to subdivide so that is eating away at our clay model we can then press the sub again which by default it should be off and then we can start to sculpt outwards into our sculpt We've then got smooth and uh, we can do exactly that start to smooth our model and if you need to turn the intensity down then you can move this slider down and just decrease the intensity that way like so or we can increase and increase the radius if we need to smooth out even more so let's go to our brush tool which is very similar to the clay tool but the clay has a a square um, brush to it whereas this brush has a very cylindrical brush okay again that subtract is on so I'm just going to turn that off we can see uh, it's more of a tube effect when you're sculpting so this is great for really small little details that you might need to add onto your model uh, if you're doing a dragon then you might want to add these kind of scale effects like so again we can go back to smooth and we can just smooth out this area Going to increase the radius and smooth it now i'm not going to be modeling anything within this video i'm just going to go through all the basics of these tools in the next video that's when i'm going to start modeling okay so that's smoothed out so next one move i'm just going to move the radius down and we can see that we can start to push and pull parts of this geometry Okay, so if you need to fine tune your selection, then you can use this move tool and move it to where you need it. We've got the drag tool, which does the exact same, but it's going to pinch a certain section and drag it out. And we can see that we can just continuously start dragging this. Now, as we drag this, it is going to distort our mesh. Again, if you want to undo, you can press this hit where it says 50 right at the bottom left hand corner all right i'm unsure <laughs> and just keep going backwards or you can just use your fingers and double click twice and it will go backwards okay very handy so that's the drag and right now i'm going to show you how we can retopologize this or we can remesh it so as i drag this out we can see here we've got the wire mode selected right at the bottom here and we can actually see our wire mesh now, as I drag this out with the drag tool, you'll notice that it's actually stretching our mesh out and it's no longer very clean. If I go up here to the topology sphere, if I press something like subdivide, and again, if you're coming from ZBrush, then this will make sense. If I press subdivide, it will increase the, um, the quality of the mesh, but it is still very messy. We still have these stretched out polygons, which we don't want. So I'm just going to press undo again and I'm going to go back up to this gridded section here where we've got our topology sphere 
And I'm going to go down to this section here where it says voxel remeshing. So I've currently got this set to 150 and I believe this is in the new updates. If you just drag the slider, we can actually see how uh, large those squares are going to be, those polygons, right? So I'm going to increase this to about 200 and then press remesh, click OK. And we can see it's now remeshed our sphere, right? So now it's nice and clean. I can press that wireframe again, go on to something like smooth and just smooth out our mesh. Okay. So whenever I make big changes, like going to the drag, again, I'll use this wire just so we can see this. It's stretching out our polygons. We just need to now press this voxel section, right at the bottom uh, left-hand corner, or right. Press voxel and it's going to make it nice and clean so we can continue to work on it. Very cool. And it's amazing that it has this within this app. It's just, to me, it's mind blowing how well it works on the iPad. So I'm just going to go back and I'm just going to go all the way back here and I'm just double tapping with my fingers. You can go down here. There's a little book icon and you can scroll through all of your history, which is very handy. So I can go all the way back to the beginning if I wanted to. So let's go somewhere around here and then let's continue. So we've got our smooth. I've shown you that just by pressing smooth here, it automatically goes to it or you can press smooth on the smooth brush. We've got the mask. So let's say I wanted to mask off this middle section here. Then I can make a mask of it. If I go back to something like my brush tool, then it will only affect outside of that mask. So I might want to make a very hard shape here or a more defined shape. And I can do that with the mask. If I want to turn it off, I can go and select the uh, mask again and then select this little ball icon here and I can either invert it. So perhaps I now want to model on the inside. So anything where it isn't masked, I can now model. So let's set this to something like subtract and then subtract into the model just to push it down even further. Okay. And then go back to mask and then select the sphere at the top and then I can press clear when I don't want it anymore. So we've got this very nice defined shape now and we can voxel this and then do something like a smooth and just smooth it out. Okay, very cool. So just get used to making a mask, make a selection and then voxel it and then continue modeling. Okay, so ideally when you voxel you want to keep it relatively low in the early stages, in the blocking stages. When you want to add more detail, then increase this resolution slider. Right, so let's get on to the cell mask. Now here we've got our settings on the side, so we can select something like a lasso and we can make a selection here. I'm just using my pencil here. And if I move away from this, you're going to have to select uh, a different tool. So let's just go back to drag and then move this. It's made that um, precise selection that we made. So let's go back into the sphere and just clear this. And let's have a look at another one. So we've got the line. Let's undo that. Let's select the rectangle. Okay. Ellipse. And polygonal tool or polygon tool sorry so we can make our selection this way very cool right so let's cancel all of that and let's go down to our paint so here we can select the paintbrush here and we've got a bunch of presets so let's say we wanted to paint this gold I can force paint the entire object if I want to or I can undo that and I can just simply paint with this material. So I can go here and I can just switch this. If I want a different color, then I can just select this color icon here. It's going to bring up our wheel picker and we can select any color we want. And I like that you see a preview of what it looks like on the model first. So if I want a very specific color, then I can see it on the model. As soon as I let go, I can start to paint with it. 
like so. If we go to the smudge, it's going to smudge the model, but it also smudges the paintwork, which is quite nice. So if you want to blend in the paintwork a little bit more, then you can use the smudge tool. And you get some really cool effects there. We've got the flatten tool, <clears throat> which does exactly that, flattens the model. So this is great for hard surface. We've got the layer tool. Now I find that this is a little bit temperamental. I don't really know why. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, but it should create a layer directly on top of the model. Now I might be getting something wrong here, but it, it's, I seem to have different results every time I go onto layer. There we go. So we're starting to see it now. But for some reason it didn't do it before. Not a clue. If you know why, then please let me know. But now it is working. So it's creating a layer directly on top of my model. I've got the crease tool, which is going to create a crease within your model, which I suppose this is the same as the dam standard or Damien standard within ZBrush. And I can remove that subtract revoxel and then I could scroll down to something like a pinch and pinch this together to make a smoother line it's going to increase the voxels here something about 200 Okay, so that doesn't work as well as ZBrush, but <laughs> you get the idea. We can pinch those two together. Uh, we've got the trim tool, and that allows us to trim through our model. So if I use something like the rectangle, then it's going to trim straight through. Very handy. Uh, and in this case, it's a lot like 3D coat, which I absolutely love. So we've got the line tool, and we can cut through. Uh, let's have a look at the ellipse. Okay, so it works really well, really, really well. I could go back to something like smooth and then just smooth these edges. <laughs> it's just amazing. It works really, really well. Now let's have a look at the split tool. So if I wanted to split part of this model, I could use something like the lasso. And now that model is split. Now I could go to something like the gizmo and move that model. Now it's split. You should now see if you select here where we've got our scene, we can see that we've now got two meshes here. Okay, so by splitting it, it splits it up into two different meshes that we can work with. So that was the gizmo. We can go to transform and I usually use transform with my fingers, not with the uh, pencil just because I can get a really nice angle. And I can just zoom in with my fingers as well if I need it a very specific size. And yeah, you can just make these really nice fine tune uh, differences here that you can't really get with the pencil. And it's hard to get this even with uh, something like ZBrush and a tablet. So yeah, this is pretty cool. Right, so let's go back to the nudge. Nudge just kind of very lightly nudges the model. So you might need to make just a small change. Like so. Uh, we've got the stamp tool. And we can just drag out this stamp here. If we go back to our brush, then we can see we've got a alpha selected. You can add your own alphas. There's only two by default. So I can select this alpha and then just drag this one on. Okay. But by all means, add your own alphas. We've then got the measuring tool. So we can measure from one place to the other. So this is great if you're doing anything like architecture, you need a very specific room size, or maybe you wanna know how big your character's head is um, in accordance to the hands, just to get it really precise, then you can do that. You can just click on it just to remove it 
and so let's go back to a different tool so that's pretty much all of the tools this is looking absolutely terrible but i assure you we'll be creating something cool in the next video i just want to show you all these brushes so you know just have a play around at this stage so that's all of our tools left hand side all right we've got our brushes and then we've got our settings on the other side so here we've got our project if you want to save this then you can save as name it and then save it we can also open a new project so let's open one of my previous ones okay and this is probably one I'm going to model for the next video and again it's all done within this uh, one app it's just pretty damn cool and right let's scroll down we've got import so if you wanted to import any objects then you can do that uh, so if I wanted to add this object that I've made into another scene then I can do that and we've also got our render settings and I currently got it set to the same resolution as my screen but by all means you can increase this to something like 4k um, and go from there right the next one is our merged objects or our scenes so any object that we've got within our scene let's do something like a primitive cylinder then we can add it this way and we can then see that we've got the cylinder and the object within our scene okay we can also convert this and we can duplicate Okay, so I've just selected the two little panels there and we can duplicate this object or I can drag this object and move it within the layer tree. Okay, move that up and down. I can rename it. Let's just say cylinder two. Okay, or I can delete it. Right, so that is our scene. Again, here we've got primitives and that's where we can actually add our objects for now I'm not going to add any other objects so I'm just going to delete this here we've got our topology uh, we currently haven't got this selected so let's select it and this is where we can subdivide our mesh to make it even higher or I can uh, revoxel this mesh here we've got our light settings so we've got a PBR lighting uh, scenario where we can add these HDR eyes. Okay, so get different lighting scenarios. And I'll usually go with one where uh, it's not going to interfere too much with the model. So something like this where it's a little bit too dark, I don't really like that. Something like this where it's a little bit more neutral, uh, I prefer to model with. But for the final render, you might want to flick through these and see which one works best for your model. Here we can change something like the exposure if you needed to make it brighter or rotate the HDRI to get a better angle. And here we've got our post-processing. Now I usually do this in Photoshop, but to have it within this app is pretty insane. If you had something underneath this model, then you can select the reflection and you'll see it reflected. Here I can add ambient occlusion which again is insane that it's within this app, but we can add ambient occlusion within this model. We can see as we move it, it's starting to render. As soon as we let go, it has rendered it. So ideally you want to turn on ambient occlusion when you start to render this. I definitely don't recommend that you have this whilst you're modeling. It's just going to slow it down. So turn ambient occlusion on when you want to start modeling and we can increase and decrease the strength here. Here we've got the depth of field. So if there's something very specific that you wanted to focus on, let's say the front of this object, then I can turn the depth of field on. The near blur is going to be removed, but then the far blur I can increase. Okay, so the background's gonna be blurred more. Let's try um, something like this. And let's go near blur. We can see that's now blurred. If I move that back, then the background isn't blurred or vice versa. Okay, very cool. Let's just turn that off for now. We've got a bloom, um, which we can't see too much within uh, this lighting scenario. So let's just switch this over to something else, something a bit brighter. So 
So we're not really seeing the bloom effect um, on this model, but you'll see just a slight glow on your model. We've then got the toning map. So we can just make some fine adjustments here if you want to increase, decrease the exposure, increase, decrease the um, contrast, and you can increase the saturation as well. So we're getting some really nice bounce light from our HDRI in the background. Very cool. And we've got a classic chromatic aberration. <laughs> um, this just makes it look a little bit more like a photograph, like it's been taken with a camera lens. So we can increase, decrease the strength. And we've got a vignette. And we can change the vignette size and the hardness. Okay, so I usually have a, a very subtle vignette. That looks pretty cool. And then we can add a, a grain. And we can decrease this just a little bit, which just helps blend in um, your objects and your paintwork a little bit more. And then we've got our sharpness, which again we can play around with. So you can turn all of these on last. Um, I'm sure you played Cyberpunk uh, 2077 by now. If you haven't, then you can see that there's almost all of these settings on by default. A lot of people like to turn it off just because it speeds up the game. It's the same thing when you're 3D modeling. Ideally, you don't want anything to uh, interrupt with the flow of your modeling. So turn it all off. But when you're rendering this, then definitely check this out and turn it on. Or you could do a little video here um, where you can see all these effects on. Right, you can also add a reference image, which I'm gonna get into more in the next video. So here, we can add a reference image. We can actually see that uh, that um, glow effect from the bloom. So let's just turn that off. So that's actually a pretty cool idea. You could add something in the background just to emphasize your model. I quite like that. Um, so let's just turn the bloom off. But yeah, we can add our own reference image and we can move it along the axes here. And we can line this up. And that's exactly how I've modeled this. So I was able to put this model directly against my reference and then model it this way. So I've got a front, back and side view and it just makes it a lot easier to model when you've got a solid reference to model from. because so you can just move it exactly over the reference, use that move tool and go from there. So here I can do things like change the scale so I can zoom in here and I can zoom into my model and get it very precise. Okay, so we're going to get into that in the next video. And here we've also got a camera. We can add a camera view. I usually model in a orthographic view. We can switch this back over to perspective. So when you're rendering this out and saving the scene, then you can save this as a, um, a perspective view. And then on this side, we've got all of our settings. So clay, brush, we've got our setting where we can change our alphas and we can change some of the settings here. This was our materials for us to paint with. This one's our mirror. So by default, I'm just gonna turn off our reference image in the background. If I select the mirror here, we can see that it's going through the uh, X axis and we can reset the world origin. So if you're modeling something and it's not directly within the center, you can reset world center and it's gonna reset it there. But you might wanna model across the Y axis. So it's going to flip and model that on the Y axis instead. We can then, uh, let's go back to that, uh, switch this back to X. We can show the line as well, where it's gonna actually show the line running through the model. So that's quite handy. We can also change the pen pressure. Now, I found by default that the pencil works perfectly fine. Uh, I haven't needed to change any of these settings, but if you prefer a lighter touch, then you can change it this way, just by moving these um, uh, curves around. Then we can add layers. Now, this is amazing. I'm, I don't know whether it had this within the earlier section uh, or I just missed it and didn't use it, but when I discovered what it was then uh, yeah it was pretty amazing now you can add layers and I usually do this right at the end of my modeling if I want to add some specific details so let's say for example I wanted to add some details on this skull then I could add a layer and then I could continue to model into this I'm just going to turn off some of my uh, post processing there we go and I could just continue to model into this so I might just want to add some very small details here 
like so. And maybe I'll just smooth this out slightly. And because this is on that layer, it's only going to be added to that layer that I've got selected. Okay, so if I don't like this, then I can just turn it off. I don't have to go through the history and undo the whole thing. If I just don't like this, I can delete that layer. So I can go back here and I can use this eye selection here and I can see what that looks like. I can also increase, decrease the layer opacity and I can duplicate it and delete it and rename it. Okay, so this is again pretty amazing. If you want to add something where maybe you're unsure as to what it's going to look like, then you could add a layer, model into it. If you don't like it, then you can just delete it or you can go through the layer opacity and just fade it in just a little bit more, okay? Again, very handy, powerful tool. Here we've got the display settings. So if you didn't want the grid, then you could turn the grid off as an example. If you wanted an outline of, mod of your model, then you can turn that on. Uh, we've got a wireframe. So if you permanently wanted the wireframe on, but we can change that here, then you can do that within the settings. Okay, we've also got the interface here, which is um, all on the side anyway. If you're finding that you're missing anything, then you might just want to go into the interface settings and just turn these on. And that just about does it for this video. Um, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed this video. I would just highly recommend that you just play around and mess around with the software before you uh, try and model anything. Just get that sphere or get any of these uh, standard primitives, put them together and see what you can create. Okay, right, see you in the next video then. Thank you, take care, bye.